movie Trouble with Harry. This is from 1955 for anyone who hasn't seen it. A bit of a rundown here. This is according to IMDb. The trouble with Harry is that he is dead. (laughs) And while no one really minds, everyone feels responsible. After Harry's body is found in the woods, several locals must determine not only how and why he was killed, but what to do with the body. And this is with Shirley MacLaine. I think this is her first ever uh, film performance. John yeah. Forsyth, uh, Edmund Gwen, who a lot of people will know as Santa Claus from uh, Miracle on 34th Street. Mildred Nat- and Mildred Natwick, Mildred Dunnock, and Jer- Jer- Jerry Mathers. I think that was the little boy, Jerry Mathers. Uh, that was um, the Beaver Kid, yeah. Yeah. That was his first, I think it was his first role before Leave it to Beaver. Yeah. Oh, he was the Beaver. Oh, God, I didn't even recognize him. Right, right. That's right. And then Royal uh, Dano was the deputy sheriff. Okay, great. So uh, how do you how do you feel about uh, Trouble with Harry, Joel? Uh, this is, I think, you know, this is essential Hitchcock. And uh, I think it's right up there with, uh, I would say, Vertigo, Marnie, Psycho, North by Northwest of his American films. Oh, wow. So you really put this high, up there high. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Um, it was one of Hitchcock's own favorite films. Yeah, he loves it. He, yeah. he loved this movie. It's interesting. And usually when a, when a film didn't do well, like this one didn't do so well, he would distance himself from it. That's right. And this time he said, you know, that the, just audiences had the wrong audience. The film was fine. Yeah. Well, it did well in Europe, yeah. apparently. It was like played for years and sold out houses, you know? And, yeah. Yeah, so I'm not surprised actually because it's it's more of that it's so British it's that humor is so British, so yeah. I can understand how the Europeans would appreciate it more. Yeah, I think uh, I wouldn't uh, put my stick in this too deeply, but I would say that this might be the film because of its European success that really you know kind of sealed his relationship with the French critics. Mm. Um, you know, there, there was a lot that they were, they were studying, but um, this is definitely a high, high watermark. And yeah, what I, what I absolutely love about it, if, if Mr. And Mrs. Smith, if we, if we could imagine that that couple is perfectly imperfect and, um, and they, they need not change, they can remain babes in the city, then uh, the trouble with Harry is, is about a society that's uh, perfectly imperfect Perf- perfectly okay with its imperfections, eyes wide open, and that they are all babes in the woods, in the Vermont woods. Mm. And and this is, um, you know, I, I think this is Hitchcock's vision of paradise. Right. Wait, he, this is where he hopes, I hope he is now. <laughs> is it just in terms of the landscape? Like the, the scenery? Uh, the, well, the scenery, uh, it's, a, it's an autumnal film for sure. And but also the people and the and the way uh, they have this this Zen like radical acceptance of, of each other and of what's you know this this kind of staining thing that has <laughs> there. that's and, what makes it so funny you know like yeah they they are um, they live in a state of grace like right I, you know and so once again we're we're back to some Christian ideas of grace and and such uh, everybody goes around confessing every sin to each other. And like everybody admits to the killing. And, right. So, and then everybody, right. and then everybody accepts their confession and moves on. Nobody reacts. I, that's a good, you know, I really wondered why I, I thought, I thought, is he doing that just because that's funny or is it, do you think there, so do you think there's more to with that, those choices to have it, everyone sort of very accepting and there's no real emotion in terms of them, you know, oh my God, I killed someone or freaking out, you know? So you think that came from some kind of what you had mentioned, Christian, something along the lines there? Yeah. Or, or you know, I would, I'd say a, a deeper religious thing. And and so we, we see it in Christianity, but we also see it in Buddhism and, and other great mm. you know, traditions of, you know, be exactly who you are, say exactly the truth. And. Oh yeah. Yeah. That's a good point. If we're all doing that. Then you know, then nobody gets hurt. And by the way, you know, so like getting back to Mr. and Mrs. Smith, so the whole, their relationship, air quotes, unravels when she asks him a very pointed question, would you stay with me, have stayed with me? And he says, honestly, no. 
And, you know, that, that little piece of dialogue right there could easily be transposed into, you know, one of the relationships in, um, in uh, The Trouble with Harry, that the, that radical honesty. And then we see how it takes yep. off different directions. So she uses that radical honesty as, as an excuse to have another long-term fight that's going to end up in some great sex. No right. problem. And in The Trouble with Harry, they use all of this radical honesty to just, well, all people fall in love all over the place. The captain and Mrs. Gravely and John Forsyth and, and oh God, she is so gorgeous. Shirley MacLaine. Shirley MacLaine, yeah. And um, everybody finds love one way or the other, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and, and, then, so, and, then the, and then another big difference is that, um, so... Uh, uh, Mrs. Smith, you know, she's she's tied up with rules. She's controlled by rules. She's just absolutely rigid in her rules. And in this, in the trouble with Harry, this is a lawless society. Like they they lie to each other. They lie to the policeman. They're covering up each other's murder somehow. They're digging and burying and, and committing, you know, necrophilia. I guess you could say. <laughs> and um, no, like nobody cares. Yeah. And in fact, the, the only presence of law that's there, the, the deputy sheriff is absolutely, you know, ineffective. Yeah. And and he's the only one who seems like, to like even he's people. disturbed or conflicted yeah. or things bother him. And he's not as accept like what he says early on about who the hell's shooting. And the other guy's like, eh, blows off a little steam, as yeah. John Fortside said. He's really the only one who doesn't fit within their their world at he's, all he's the uh you know in in hitchcock's world there's always somebody who shows up who's who's a stain on society like in shadow of a doubt you know it's uncle charlie he's the stain yes yeah and one, the only stain is the emasculated sheriff's deputy yeah <laughs> yeah and that's a good point ineffective you know he's just and everybody <laughs> they accept him too and, and they accept his his uh lawful the hostility of his lawfulness is just part of the part of the plan too, you know? And, and so they just, uh, right. They don't reject him. They, they invite him in. Um, right. Right. Him and uh, hide evidence. <laughs> yeah. You, you know, and this is another movie that I've seen it once before. Another one that I didn't really care for light. And I liked it a lot more. And I, and I think a lot of what you're saying is perhaps, I couldn't I couldn't quite consciously think of why I liked it more other than I just thought it was so unique how no one really was getting worked up. No one was I thought at first when I saw no one really caring, I thought, is he is he saying something about the fact that he's like in society that we don't feel for one each other? Like it's kind of reminds me of the in the rear window, the woman at the top talking of when the when the dog is killed, uh, talking about how people don't care about one another and then as the film progresses i'm like no he's not saying that i think just, yeah. i think he's just it, it, it was both funny a unique choice but now i'm really thinking about what you said uh, uh was he was that having to do with you know being accepting of your choices of of the of accepting of the what's happening in the present uh, living in the present and not necessarily, uh, you know, because when you accept something, obviously, the, you know, any anger you have is 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 uh, when you accept your anger, then you're no longer angry, right? It's mm -hmm. anger only comes from not accepting what's happening. Uh, mm -hmm. So, I, I has is is that something that you discovered in this, uh, or is that something that in all the Hitchcock yeah. books people have talked about? Uh, well, you know, I think you made you made, you brought up an interesting connection that I hadn't seen before you know comparing what's going on here with rear window and really what she was saying from that fire escape you could say was you people are all apathetic she was railing against apathy yeah yeah and and then what i see in um you know in trouble with harry is a deep empathy that everybody has for each other so right except for harry <laughs> except for Harry, yeah. yeah. So, so then, in that sense, you know, once again, you know, Harry could be the Christ figure who carries the sins, and but um, ah. so uh, that idea of you know all these people being, um, you know, 
if if I were to con come to you, you or anyone else and confess a murder, that that person would be horrified and for of course, of course, call the police. You know, second thing would be to think horrible things about me. Every time they confess, you know, and Shirley um, confesses to you know being responsible for Harry's death. She explains it and people were like, well, I, I can understand that. I can understand that. <laughs> you know? and, and so it's like they, they in a sense, I think they, they see uh, themselves in the other person. If I were in your shoes, I would do that too. And, and so like, I think that like the, the big message of, of Hitchcock's movies is don't be apathetic. Like that's, that's a huge strain. Apathy and complacency, as, as he said, you know, to Truffaut is what basically caused Melanie to be, that was her main problem. And that's what was causing the bird attacks, right? And <clears throat> so, and then by, by contrast, what he's saying is, you know, the trouble with Harry is his model of what it means to be radically empathetic. And so mm, mm. my takeaway from it is, you know, we, we look at somebody who's less fortunate than we are. We might say, you know, there, but for the grace of God, go I. And, and I think right. the, um, what the message of the trouble of Harry is there in the grace of God, go I. And that means if I see a homeless person or if I see a millionaire, I can look at them and say, you know, in the grace of God, there go I. In other words, um, that that person, you know, I am that person, and that person is me. It's it's very much an outreaching, you know. Um, uh, what's the word I'm looking? For? It's a very soul expansive, you know. Um, yeah, that we're that we're all basically the same. In, we're all, in, yeah, we're all one. Yeah, in a and, lot of ways, that's really good insight. I I would have never thought of it that way because I guess I I I you know I mean I was I've always been interested in in, in Zen Buddhism, and I had a teacher who was um really interested in 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 that as well uh but you know i suppose we i i never look at i, I never look at stories that way because you don't see storytelling told in, in in this sort of people being very accepting it's very because there's no conflict or or you know uh stuff like that so uh that's a really really good point i know you know it's funny because when scorsese was asked about this film he said it looks beautiful but i don't get it and i i know why he says that because his films are so you know full of rage and tension and which i love and i can i can understand growing you know that a lot of people would have a hard time seeing that it's not obvious yeah you know it's obvious that they don't care uh, uh or not that they don't care that they're um accepting and and they're oh you know they're just sort of get solving you know trying to get out of the situation but not getting worked up they're all working together you know the only one you certainly see worked up is the uh uh the i forget the the actor's name now the i always just call him santa the guy who plays santa oh, and Some, yeah, yeah yeah him uh he, he he starts to get so sick of like digging and like the grave again and again uh but everyone else is so calm <laughs> yeah. I love the line where after they're they're uh, re-interring him for the uh you know the last time i think and he says um, and the, the pressure is on they've got to hide the body from you know from the police and he says let's bury him with hasty reverence and i, I love that image of how do you behave hastily reverent <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's also there's also more uh direct um lines uh about sex in this film like he even says to shirley mcclain i want to paint you naked i thought wow 1955 uh yeah i don't know how he got that by the code uh yeah. and in even when they were talking about when when they're talking about the other the uh, the woman that um uh that uh sorry what's his name again the i always santa i'm just gonna say santa oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah the captain and he says yeah. um uh, and he said, "Oh, you, they mentioned that, that you know she's oh she's oh she's a well preserved woman, you know that oh well everything well preserved has to be uh, oh what does he say again? Has to be opened sometime. It's opened up something like that, yeah. And I just thought, wow, you know, <laughs> he always was clever. I mean, not that he wrote it. Whoever wrote it was the clever one. But um, in yeah. his films, he always found ways for people like North by Northwest to be talking about something so 
uh, sexy or erotic or sexual, and no one actually yeah. says those words, except in this film, they actually say naked. Yeah. <laughs> and then at the beginning, there uh, apparently he's meeting Shirley MacLaine for the first time, and they're sitting on the porch, and she yeah. to the to the murder, and and he says, um, you know, I like I like the way your mouth moves. Yeah, Especially the way you say good. Yeah, and it's like it's at that moment that like she knows that he knows that she knows that she's interested, and she gets this look on her face of like uh, absolutely played perfectly. She's like, this guy's horny like a dog for me. Well, <laughs> I just, yes, I like this. I think I shall play this game too. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I love that. And then, of course, at the end with the double bed, you know, like that, that's what he wished for. Was it? We, 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 of course, you know what he's talking about, you yeah. know, and no one, no one in the 50s, you anytime you saw a bedroom, they always had the two single beds yeah. in every movie. And, yeah. and so I don't know how did, did you was has anything been written about how he got some of this dialogue past the censors? No, uh, it makes it hasn't been written, but I can't. Uh, That's interesting. I wonder, head. yeah, if anyone knows, uh, mm -hmm. please let us know. But again, this is a film that's not, you know, dis I'm sure it has been, but it's not the obvious film that gets discussed um, in length. Here's you know, a, what, go I, ahead. Yeah. Here's a uh, feeling that I had, uh, again, watching it just in, in prep for our, for our conversation. Um, I've always liked it. Uh, as a hangout film. Tarantino uh, described mm. his movies as hangout films. Right. Uh, James Brown, he called that a hangout film. You just had these characters that were just like so awesome and cool. You just wanted to hang out with them, which means right. watching the movie over and over again. And, you know, I think Trouble with Harry is a real hangout movie. I just want to hang out with all these. Exactly. Yeah. Funny, yeah. quirky, beautiful. And, and the feeling that I had was that I was like, I had this heart feeling of just watching it. And I'm like, Okay, yeah, that's uh, that scans. That's that's exactly, you know, I, I think that's very intentional on you know on Hitch's part. That here we are, you know, half a century more later, and uh, can still just like uh, hang out with these people, which again gets you back to this like that the the, um, the movie itself I think is is timeless. Like you feel like you're in in uh, the sort of Arcadia where it's just one long beautiful day. And um, and so, like, then it, it kind of stands to reason that, um, you know, you could sort of go back there and uh, un uncork that, that movie and, and, and drink from it, you know, for, for an eternity. So, yeah, no, it's 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 well said. I had I hadn't thought of it that way. And it's true. I mean, it is something that I mean, you 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 wish in a way you you wish you had that same temperament, you know, but so yeah. <laughs> it's hard to to achieve that. Another thing I thought about, you know, I, every time I think of John Forsythe, I think of him when he was older as like those sleazy characters he uh, played in, you know, Dynasty yeah. and, and Justice yeah. for All with Pacino, uh, you know, that really awful guy he plays there. But yeah, that one. he's so, oh, it's great. And he's so charming in this. And he remind. I kept thinking, mm -hmm. who does he remind me of? And he's like a, like a, 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 a less edgy and handsomer Bogart, I thought. Just the, even, he even sounded a little like him. I don't know if that popped up to you, but he really reminded me of him. I have absolutely loved John Forsyth. And my, so my image of him is, I never saw Dynasty and I didn't, I never saw the uh, Pacino movie. So my right. whole take on him has been, um, uh, movies and, and TV shows from the 50s and he always played uh, or as far as I can remember always played uh, the good guy and kind of a father knows best kind of a figure right when he was young yeah and and man is if I had hair like that I <laughs> oh he had a great head of hair man I just like even when he was old like he just he always looked so slick yeah um, but and he's another actor people don't think about as much in with it. You know, he was in Topaz. Topaz. Was I think just those, he's only in two, right? Hitchcock, uh, I think. I think he was only in two Hitchcock films. And I think he was in a Hitchcock uh, Presents episode or two. Yeah, um, that's right. Yeah, he, he was in a couple of those. One thing about the film, in, and I can see why this might be off-putting for some people. Uh, I, I think it's got a Lebowski effect. I think you have to see it once or twice before it really gets under your skin. Yeah. And, um because it it is it's a, it's a very quiet film 
and and in some very of the scenes, very soft spoken in you know in their in their dialogue, and um, and so I think it it doesn't it doesn't come at you you know it doesn't pre it literally does not project towards you you kind of have to really lean in and pay attention and oh yeah is you know sit up straight to to take it in. Yeah. Yeah. It's really about, again, it's really about the, it's the, about the behavior, which is the same with Mr. and Mrs. Smith. It's more, you know, it's, it's, you got to the same with the wrong man. It's, it's much, it's much more about the people rather than uh, more of the suspense plot driven films that were more of a, a mix between the characters, but also the suspense, the plot and stuff like that. Sorry. I, I think I cut you off. What were you saying, Joel? Oh no, that yeah, absolutely. I think I think it's that. I, I think there are other things going on with it uh, too. Like, um, so Hitch Hitchcock's favorite artist was Paul Clay, and uh, you might know him from the Twittering Machine. I've and, heard of it. Yeah, I've heard the name. Yeah, and and so the uh, so the opening credits were done by Saul Steinberg, the the famous uh, New Yorker cartoonist, and uh, Steinberg's work is basically. Uh, kind of a kind of a recap of Clay's a, a certain period in Clay's career, and and Clay like like Hitchcock played a had a very funny sense of humor about death, and um, death and comedy and tragedy and comedy were kind of like very very much intertwined, and uh, so kind of a fun rabbit hole to go down is after watching Trouble with Harry. Uh, you know, just grab a book of uh, clay illustrations or, you know, his artwork and uh, just flip through there and just um, don't even read the captions. Don't read the, the the text. Just look at the pictures and see how they how you react to them. OK, yeah. I'll have to check that out. Yeah, yeah I you know, it, you you had mentioned a lot of last time the paintings Hitch, Hitchcock was influenced. And it's it's uh, other than like the obvious stuff like Dali that in uh mm -hmm um spell so, spellbound that uh yeah. you know that he was had that he had his uh paintings and, and figures in i never realized how much uh yeah his his yeah. films are inspired by by artwork and stuff like that yeah. um but yeah no I, I i really enjoyed it there's there's a lot to to discover about uh about people but it's certainly it's certainly worth checking out for anyone who hasn't seen it did you have any final thoughts on this film uh, oh no, I just loved it. It's pretty complex stuff, but it just goes down so easy, you know. Yes, it does. That's a good. That's a really good point. Which, of course, you know, brings us back to this question of whether, you know, Hitchcock was uh, good within the comedy genre. And you know, before we started, uh, we we asked ourselves these questions. And what I was thinking was, well maybe more in the in a you know dark humor or sadistic humor or or yeah. like he had it in his films but now um after talking about this and 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 really just looking at the work uh i mean i found myself laughing i think i hey, think he was funny <laughs> yeah if you laugh then it's funny exactly yeah. um yeah i mean i i i i wished um you know i i wish he had done more more movies like this i mean perhaps down the road we'll see more people talking about um his lesser known lesser known films it's it's hard to say but yeah. uh you know did, did has your opinion changed at all in this uh, last hour joel or <laughs> uh no i learned uh, a few things i love that connection between you know apathy and empathy and mm -hmm. where this kind of falls in that scale and um and i i my yeah uh, that'll give me something to think about for sure joel this was great uh, joel thanks again uh, hey, really appreciate it hopefully i'll have you back soon yeah Keep talking hitch yeah and uh take care but we'll certainly be in touch okay have a good one all right have a good one and thanks so much everyone we'll see you soon